What's going on there YouTube and welcome to Fresh Comic Stories. Guys, this is the channel that we basically sit down and cover different kinds of comic book stories from Marvel to DC to even IDW. Now, we're going to jump back over to Marvel and we're going to continue our coverage over Spider-Man One More Day era and we're going to cover the first storyline that Menace appeared in Marvel Comics. So, Guys, please hit that like button down below and also subscribe for more comic book stories like this in the near future. Also, any suggestions on books I should read? Well, please let me know in the comments below because you never know, your suggestion could be a future video down the road. But let's dive back into Spider-Man One More Day, Volume 1, Part 2. Man, that is a mouthful. Now, the second story from Brand New Day Volume 1 really picks up after the ending of the first story, where it is Marvel trying to build the status of Spider-Man after the ending of One More Day. But in the beginning of this storyline, we get the introduction of another supervillain being put out there in the world for Spider-Man to fight against. Now, we don't see this character at all just yet, but we see him kill a few people so he can get control of this random warehouse. But we actually jump over to Peter Parker right now arriving to his first day at the Daily Bugle under a new boss, which this new boss name is Dexter Bennett. Now we come to find out real quick that Dexter is a harder boss than Jonah because when Peter Parker gets there, he sees his friend packing his things up because well, he just got fired. And so Peter is worried he will be next but he gets a pass. But this is where you have Dexter tell everyone that their new assignment is to get a picture of the new villain in the city. Whoever gets the photo first, well that person will get $10,000. And so you have Peter Parker put on his Spider-Man outfit and tries to go find this new villain who's attacking the city. And so he can one, stop that person, but also get the prize money as well. But that is when he hears someone getting mugged, which then leaves Peter Parker going to stop the mugging, but then sees another hero already being there, which this character's name is Jackpot. Now, she does not have any powers, she really is just someone who has fighting skills, and she decided to put on a mask to be a hero. Now, this is Marvel basically giving Spider-Man another lady in his life, which could be his new girlfriend. But while he's working alongside her, Peter realized two things about her and that she looks just like Mary Jane. But the second thing is that she says things like Tiger, which was something Mary Jane used to say all the time. And so he is wondering if this is Mary Jane or not. Now, Peter does go ask Harry Osborne if he has heard anything from Mary Jane. Because since the breakup of Peter and Mary Jane, they have not talked at all. And so Peter is seeing if MJ is back in town and trying to be a superhero. Peter can't work with Jackpot to find out because one, he is also an outlaw. Remember, in the Civil War event, if you were a superhero and you did not try to work with S.H.I.E.L.D., well, you were basically an outlaw. And since Peter Parker did jump over sides to Captain America's side, well, Spider-Man is technically an outlaw right now and Jackpot is working for S.H.I.E.L.D. And so her job is to bring in heroes who are not working with S.H.I.E.L.D. And so you have Peter decide to put that case on hold because Harry tells Peter, no, MJ is not in New York, she's still in L.A. Now, you do have Peter decide to look for the new bad guy once again, which this new bad guy is using the same kind of tech that the other goblins has used in the past as well. And so Peter is able to find a trail that leads him to the warehouse that we saw earlier. Now, when Peter gets to this warehouse though, he does run into Jackpot once again. And you have Jackpot just there telling Peter that she is also looking for the same bad guy as well. But this does bring Peter wondering again, is this Mary Jane under that mask? And so when he's about to ask her 
who are you really that is when they both get interrupted by another superhero telling peter parker that he is now under arrest which we come to find out it is another character named blue shield now he is a character who does not matter at all hate to be harsh on the man but really he is just a character who is working with shield and he is trying to arrest spider-man and jackpot is going to help him do that because again Spider-Man was on the side of Captain America in the Civil War and so with that Peter Parker is wanted by S.H.I.E.L.D. for not working with them. But this also showing Peter Parker being a seasoned hero because he is able to take both these guys on and only struggle for a little bit but this is not a major issue at all. The major issue is the appearance of Menace who is being the new goblin on the streets but also the fact that this character is going to be another villain for this new status quo for Spider-Man's rogue gallery. Because remember, Mr. Negative is still out there and now you have Menace as well. And so you have Spider-Man leave the new heroes behind and try to deal with the Menace. But Menace deals with Spider-Man with an ease and warns Spider-Man that the next time they meet, Menace will kill Spider-Man. And so Menace just cuts Spider-Man and leaves him behind to lick his wounds. But we then jump back over to Peter Parker going to the Daily Bugle to get his money and also use a computer there. Because he just got word about the new serial killer on the loose. Because if you remember at the end of our last video, we saw Carly Cooper working on a new case. This new case involved a dead body, but having a spider tracer in the mouth of the victim. But after that one body, five others has popped up as well. Just like the first dead body, each of these bodies has a spider tracer in their mouths. And so right now, it looks like that Spider-Man is the one who is killing all of these people. And so Peter is hoping to find out who is the lead detective on the case, which he finds out is a detective named Pallone. Now when Spider-Man goes to meet up with this detective on the case, this is where they share information about this case, where you have Spider-Man tell the detective that he is innocent because well, whoever this killer is, this person is using an older model of the Spider Tracer. And so Spider-Man is trying to tell him that he is actually an innocent man this time. But that is when a loud explosion happens nearby which tells Spider-Man that the menace is back again and right now attacking debate between two candidates who are running for mayor. The problem is that when Spider-Man tries to leave and go stop menace, the detective called in backup to basically arrest Spider-Man because he still believes that Spider-Man is the serial killer. Now, with Spider-Man being a seasoned hero, being a hero for so long in Marvel Comics, you automatically think that Spider-Man should be able to avoid the cops with an ease. And the problem is though, even though at first he is able to avoid every single cop, he forgot to do one thing, which was to refill his web shooters. And so right now, he has no web fluids. And so he is falling out of the sky and he is about to die. But at the very last second, the very last second, you have Jackpot appear to save his life. And you have Jackpot and Spider-Man agree to work together only this once to bring down Menace. Because right now, like I said, he's attacking a debate going on between two people who are trying to become the mayor of New York City. Now, of course, this does lead to a battle between Spider-Man and Jackpot working together to fight against Menace for a good few pages. But here comes the big issue of this fight. Now, I keep mentioning how Spider-Man is a seasoned hero. He has been fighting for a long time in Marvel Comics, but Jackpot is a new hero. She's only been around for probably a couple weeks. And so with that being said, 
while they're fighting against Menace, Menace does grab one of the two people who is trying to run for mayor. And so you have Spider-Man say, we have to go and save her. Which of course, Spider-Man is able to save her and he hands her over to Jackpot. And he tells Jackpot, listen, I need you to stay with her and protect her. I can handle Menace on my own. But since Jackpot is a new hero and she wants to prove to the world that she can be one of the top heroes in the world like Spider-Man or Iron Man or whoever, she leaves the person behind after Peter Parker just told her, listen, we just saved her, but I need you to stay with her while I take care of Menace. But again, she wants to prove that she can be a good superhero. And so she jumps back into the battle. And that is when you realize that Spider-Man knows what is going to happen next. A major accident. Because while the two of them are fighting against Menace, all three of them fall off the glider and the glider just free flies straight down to the ground and actually kills the lady who was running for mayor, the one that Spider-Man told Jackpot to protect, saying, listen, this is your fault. She died because of you. You want to prove that you can be a hero and you jump back into battle and now she's dead. If you were there, you've been able to save her life at the very last second, but instead you decided you want to be a hero and now she is gone. Which of course, this does lead into basically Menace getting away. And you do have Spider-Man kind of like, well, dang, that's now two bad guys out there that I have to go and find, Mr. Negative and now Menace. But you do have Peter Parker leave before the police are able to arrest him. And he does take the pictures he was able to get to get the prize money from the Daily Bugle. And so Peter Parker just got $10,000. But... To close this storyline right here, Peter Parker was able to figure out who is the real person behind the mask of Jackpot. And of course, we come to find out that it's not Mary Jane. It's actually a girl named Sarah Herrett, and I really hope I pronounce her last name correctly. But you do have Peter able to look up her information and go find out where she lives because Peter knows how bad she must feel right now because she knows it's her fault that young lady died earlier in the story. And so when Peter goes and see her, she plays like she has no idea what he is talking about. But then at the very last second, she tells him to just leave her alone. Saying that, yes, I am Jackpot, but right now, I just want to be left alone for my mistake. And guys, this is where we are going to end today's comic book video. So please leave me a like down below and also subscribe for more comic book stories in the near future. Also, any suggestions on books I should read? Well, please let me know in the comments below because you never know your suggestion could be a future video down the road. But guys, I'm out of here and I'll see you on the next comic book video. Later, guys.